today I'm joined by Professor Aaron Pierce with the Initiative for Climate Leadership and Resilience. How are you today, Dr. Pierce? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, so I'm a professor in the mathematics department here, but um, I'm also part of a, a group that's leading the Initiative for Climate Leadership and Resilience, as you said. So this is a group of faculty that's uh, working to build an organization um, that's addressing climate change and sustainability issues on the academic side of campus. So the campus is doing a great job on the facility side in terms of decarbonizing its own operations. Um, but in terms of training students to become the next generation of climate leaders, we think there's still more that needs to be done. I understand the Initiative for Climate Leadership and Resilience has got a conference coming up, the first of its kind here at Cal Poly called Climate Solutions Now. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is a conference aimed at people who are concerned about concerned about the climate crisis, but uh, don't necessarily know how to get engaged. Most people think that in order to do something substantive, you need to be uh, an environmental sciences major or something like this, maybe an electrical engineer. Um, but it turns out that the types of jobs that need to be done and the skill sets for them are much more broad. And so right now, we actually have all the technology we need to solve the climate crisis. What's missing is the, the human part of that solution. So we need to um, implement those uh, solutions. And that means uh, educating people, building consensus, getting you know political reforms passed, um, and then also doing the ins and outs of daily work with um, uh, developing the plans to make infrastructure developments and other things go forwards. And so this requires people who are in communications and education and English, um, <clears throat> people who are in uh, political science and marketing and graphic design and music, uh, people from all over campus uh, and in disciplines that you wouldn't necessarily think. So the point of this conference is to um, engage students or show students manners in which they can become engaged um, and then also kind of showcase all the work that's being done locally, because it turns out that San Luis Obispo is actually a bit of a climate leader. Uh, we're ahead of the curve in many respects. Um, and a lot of the work that's being done is sort of invisible and, and behind the scenes. So it's, it's good to recognize that. I think it's also, it helps people uh, with their climate anxiety to see that, you know what, there's actually a lot of work being done. Um, and uh, that when we recognize how much work is left to be done, there's also a lot of ways to get involved regardless of your, your background or training or political leaning. Great, so what type of events will be taking place during this conference? So we have um, over 90 talks scheduled in 12 different parallel sessions. Um, and so this runs the gamut of uh, various different topics like there's agriculture and alternative energy, uh, the built environment, uh, careers in sustainability, climate action planning, environmental justice, um, natural resources, regional and local climate action, uh, the sciences, transportation, and volunteer organizations, if I remember correctly. So there's all kinds of stuff uh, going on. We've got some really big name speakers um, and also some speakers that I think will be uh, of a particular interest to people around here. So we've got, um, let's see, somebody from Cal ISO and the Rocky Mountain Institute. And so if, if you haven't heard of Cal ISO, that's the independent system operator, also known as the grid, basically the folks that run all the electricity for most of California. Um, we also have uh, someone from the Environmental Defense Fund uh, and we also have a prestigious professor from uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison, who's also the uh, chair and secretary of the Epic N project. Um, and uh, let's see who else. And we have uh, Heidi Harmon, formerly the mayor and now uh, at the Romero Institute talking about her work. Um, and then there's also people from Vistra, Thorcon, Ecdysis Foundation, Carbon Cycle Institute, Calcan, um, and uh, a bunch of others. And so we'll have people that are um, from industry, uh, people who are from government, there's gonna be entrepreneurs speaking so that uh, students can understand how much entrepreneurial uh, opportunity there is in the sustainability domain. Um, and then a lot of people from local government around here, so electeds and staffers both, um, showing what's being done at the city and county and regional level, and, and a couple of folks actually from state level as well. Great, and where can interested participants go to get involved with this conference? So the tickets are um, being registered through climate.calpoly.edu. 
that's our main ICLR site. And once you're there, you can look for the links to the conference and, and that'll get you to ticket registration. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Pierce, for meeting with me, chatting with me about Climate Solutions Now that's going to be taking place on October 2nd and 3rd. It sounds like it's going to be a great event. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here, Devin.